Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of Judges, reading chapter 13, verses 1 through verse 25. Again, we're going to continue reading from the book of Judges, chapter 13, verses 1 through verse 25. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <sighs> God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for this Resurrection Sunday. I give you thanks for my life. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa. And I give you thanks for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask in your name. May there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. In the name of God the Father. Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. The sixth period, Samson, the birth of Samson. Chapter 13, verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was sterile and remained childless. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are sterile and childless, but you are going to conceive and have a son. Now see to it, that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean, because you will conceive and give birth to a son. No razor may be used on his head, because the boy is to be a Nazarite, set apart to God from birth, and he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman went to her husband and told him, A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from. He didn't tell me his name, but he said to me, You will conceive and give birth to a son. Now then, drink no wine or other fermented drink, and do not eat anything unclean, because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from birth until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, O Lord, I beg you, let the man of God you sent to us come again and teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. God heard Manoah. And the angel of God came again to the woman while she was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman hurried to tell her husband, He's here. The man who appeared to me the other day, Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said, Are you the one who talked to my wife? I am, he said. So Manoah asked him, When your words are fulfilled, what is to be the rule for the boy's life and work? The angel of the Lord answered, Your wife must do all that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine 
nor drink any wine or other fermented drink. Not eat anything unclean. She must do everything I have commanded her. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, We would like you to stay until we prepare a young goat for you. The angel of the Lord replied, Even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. Manoah did not realize that it was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, What is your name, so that we may honor you when your word comes true? He replied, Why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Then Manoah took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on a rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched. As the flame blazed up from the altar toward heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Seeing this, Manoah and his wife fell with their faces to the ground. When the angel of the Lord did not show himself again to Manoah and his wife, Manoah realized that it was the angel of the Lord. We are doomed to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. But his wife answered, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and grain offering from our hands, nor shown us all these things, or now told us this. The woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew, and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the lord began to stir him while he was in maneldan between zora and eshtel these are the words of our lord our god brothers and sisters let's break down some of these verses together Verse 1 of chapter 13 reads, Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for forty years. The Philistines lived on the west side of Canaan, along the Mediterranean sea coast. From Samson's day until the time of David, they were the major enemy force in the land and a constant threat to Israel. The Philistines were fierce warriors. They had the advantage over Israel in numbers, tactical experience, and technology. They knew the secret of making weapons out of iron. As we read this in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 19 through 22. But none of that mattered when God was fighting for Israel. Once again, the cycle of sin, judgment, and repentance began, as we read in chapter 3, verses 8, verse 9, verse 14, and verse 15, and as we read in chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, and as we read in chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, and as we read in chapter 10, verse 6, through chapter 11, verse 11. The Israelites would not turn to God unless they had been stunned by suffering, oppression, and death. This suffering was not caused by God, but resulted from the fact that the people ignored God, their judge and their ruler. What will it take for you to follow God, brothers and sisters? The warnings in God's word are clear. If we continue to harden our hearts against God, we can expect the same fate as Israel. The warning, warnings in God's word are clear. If we continue to harden our hearts against God, 
we can expect the same fate as Israel. Powerful brothers and sisters. Verse 4 and 5. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean, because you will conceive and give birth to a son. No razor may be used on his head, because the boy is to be a Nazarite, set apart to God from birth. And he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Samson was to be a Nazarite, a person who took a vow to be set apart for God's service. Samson's parents made the vow for him. A Nazarite vow was sometimes temporarily, but in Samson's case, it was for life. As a Nazarite, Samson could not cut his hair, touch a dead body, or drink anything containing alcohol. Although Samson often used poor judgment and sinned terribly, he accomplished much when he determined to be set apart for God. In this way, he was like the nation Israel. As long as the Israelites remained set apart for God, the nation thrived, but they fell into terrible sin when they ignored God. Manoah's wife was told that her son would begin the deliverance of Israel from the Philistine oppression. It wasn't until David's day that the Philistine opposition was completely crushed, as we read in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. Samson's part in subduing the Philistines was just the beginning, but it was important nonetheless. It was a task God had given Samson to do. Be faithful in following God, even if you don't see instant results, because you might be beginning an important job that others may finish. Amen, brothers and sisters. Verse 18, he replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Why did the angel keep his name a secret? In those days, people believed that if they knew someone's name, they knew his character and how to control him. By not giving his name, the angel was not allowing himself to be controlled by Manoah. He was also saying that his name was a mystery beyond understanding and too wonderful to imagine. Manoah asked the angel for an answer that he wouldn't have understood. Sometimes we ask God questions and then receive no answer. This may not be because God is saying no. We may have asked for knowledge beyond our ability to understand or accept. Verse 19, brothers and sisters. Then Manoah took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on the rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched. Manoah sacrificed a grain offering to the Lord. A grain offering was grain, oil, and flour shaped into a cake and burned on the altar along with the burnt offering, the young goat. The grain offering described in Leviticus chapter 2 was offered to God as a sign of honor, respect, and worship. It was an acknowledgement that because the Israelites' food came from God, they owed their lives to him. With the grain offering, Manoah showed his desire to serve God and demonstrated his respect. In fact, everything that we have, brothers and sisters, belongs to God. God gives us everything. In verse 24 and 25, the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. 
He grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahanel Dan between Zorah and Eshtel. Samson's tribe Dan continued to wander in their inherited land. As we read in chapter 18, verse 1, which was yet unconquered. Samson must have grown up with his warlike tribe's yearnings for a permanent and settled territory. Thus, his visits to the tribal army camp stirred his heart, and God's Spirit began preparing him for his role as judge and leader against the Philistines. Perhaps there are things that stir our hearts, brothers and sisters. These may indicate areas where God wants to use us. God uses a variety of means to develop and prepare us. Hereditary traits, environmental influences, and personal experiences. As with Samson, this preparation often begins long before adulthood. Work at being sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading and the task God has prepared for you. you your past may be more useful to, to you than you imagine. So our past may be more useful to us, brothers and sisters, than we can imagine. Great reading, brothers and sisters. I know the story of Samson, they've made movies about it, but this is the first time that uh, I've read the actual chapter 13 of the book of Judges. Now here's a little bit of background on Samson. It is sad to be remembered for what one might have been. Samson had tremendous potential. Not many people have started life with credentials like his. Born as a result of God's plan in the lives of Manoah and his wife, Samson was to do great work for God, to begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. To help him accomplish God's plan, he was given enormous physical strength. Because Samson wasted his strength on practical jokes and getting out of scrapes. And because he eventually gave it up altogether to satisfy the woman he loved. We tend to see him as a failure. We remember him as the judge in Israel who spent his last days grinding grain in an enemy prison, and we say, what wasted potential? Yes, Samson wasted his life. He could have strengthened his nation. He could have returned his people to the worship of God. He could have wiped out the Philistines. But even though he did none of those things, Samson still accomplished the purpose announced by the angel who visited his parents before his birth. In his final act, Samson began to rescue Israel from the Philistines. Interestingly, the New Testament does not mention Samson's failures or his heroic feats of strength. In Hebrews, he is simply listed with others who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, and in other ways were given superhuman aid. In the end, Samson recognized his dependence on God. When he died, God turned his failures and defeats into victory. Samson's story teaches us that it is never too late to start over again, brothers and sisters. However badly we may have failed in the past, today 
it's not too late for us to put our complete trust in God. Amen. Some of Samson's strengths and accomplishments. Dedicated to God from birth as a Nazarite, known for his feats of strength, listed in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11, began to free Israel from the Philistine oppression. Some of his weaknesses and mistakes violated his vow and God's laws on many occasions, was controlled by sens sensuality, confided in the wrong people, used his gifts and abilities unwisely. Lessons that we learn from Samson's life. Great strength in one area of life does not make up for great weaknesses in other areas. God's presence does not overwhelm a person's will. God can use a person of faith in spite of his or her mistakes. I love that one. God can use a person of faith in spite of his or her mistakes. Some vital statistics. Where this took place in Zora, Timna, Ashkelon, Gaza, and Valley of Sorek. His occupation, he was a judge. His relative, his father, was Manoah. Contemporaries was Delilah, Samuel, who might have been born while Samson was a judge. A key verse. You will conceive and give birth to a son. No razor may be used on his head because the boy is to be a Nazarite, set apart to God from birth, and he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. That's Judges chapter 13, verse 5. Samson's story is told in Judges chapter 13 through Judges chapter 16. He is also mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Great reading, brothers and sisters. Great reading. I hope you guys, you know, receive some, some great stuff out of tonight's reading. The thing that I realized the most and what I've known, what's speaking to me is just, how God can use us, no matter what our past is, no matter what, where we came from, no matter what mistakes we've made. He can use us. All we have to do is put all of our trust in Him fully, 100%, and have faith in Him. And He can use us. Amen, brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just give you thanks for today. Again, I give you thanks for this beautiful Resurrection Sunday that I passed with my family. I passed with my wife and my beautiful four children. Just thank you for such a great day. Thank you for the great time we had at church fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters in Christ. It was just a beautiful day. Lord, I give you thanks for, for this reading. Chapter 13 of Judges, Samson's birth. And I give you thanks for, for reminding me that it doesn't matter what mistakes we've done, where we come from, if we surrender to you and have faith in you, you can and will use us. And how honored we should feel, I do feel, that you are using me and that you can use us. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. That you forgive everyone watching this video of their sins. I ask that you give us all a discerning heart. That you fill us all with your Holy Spirit. That you remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe. That you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask in Jesus' name that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, any knee problems, any heart problems. 
depression. Anything that's causing us pain or, or making us sick, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, in Jesus' name, I ask that you heal us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you break chains of addiction. Whether the addiction is in us or someone that we love, I ask that you break chains of addiction, of drinking, of smoking, of drugging, of lusting, of money, of power, of greed. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sin that we enjoy doing and choose to do it, I ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us heavy in our heart and makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I give you thanks for my wife and children. And I ask that you bless, heal, and protect them. And that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my mother and my grandmother, my sister Liz, my sister Yvette. I ask that you continue to help Sophie Borge continue to, to recover. And that you bless, heal, and protect her and fill her and her father and her mother and her brothers with your Holy Spirit. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my uncle Oscar. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect Delia, that you heal her. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect Henry Tim, prayer warrior brother Ryan's mother and his wife, prayer warrior sister Teresa's daughter Rakia, and our other prayer warrior sister Teresa, her brother Roman. I ask that, that you break chains of depression and suicide in Jesus' name. I ask if we have any of our loved ones incarcerated that you renew their hearts and their minds and their bodies and their souls and open their eyes that they leave that life that got them incarcerated and just turn to you and fully surrender to you, Lord. I ask that you fill with the Holy Spirit any one of your prayer warriors that's mourning the loss of a loved one. I ask that you help your prayer warriors that have no job find a job. That you restore broken relationships, renew broken hearts. That you reunite mothers and fathers with their children and you do not let no court system separate loving parents from their children. I ask that if any of us prayer warriors are going through any type of legal issues, that if we're praying and reading and applying your Holy Scripture to our lives every day, and if we have the courage to lay down these legal issues at your feet, King Jesus, I ask that you be our advocate, that you be our defender, that you be our attorney, and may your will be done. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry, everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, and everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I especially ask that you bless, heal, and protect Brother Brian Trejo and his wife and children, Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children, and Pastors David and Angel Rocha and their wives and children. I love you, I need you, and I give you all the glory, Abba, our Almighty Father, King Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys have a great night. And we'll continue reading. God bless you. May God's peace fill you. Good night.